Hey everybody. So glad you guys are joining me tonight. Um, we're going to be going through something that we typically do on a Sunday morning. These, these prayer guides that we'll be going through praying together are available every Sunday. Um, typically we meet over here in the ministry center where I'm at right now. But being that uh, we're in the situation we are, everything's going to look a little bit different. So I'm so glad you guys are here today. Uh, what the goal tonight that we are going to be doing is we want to pray together. Um, there's very few things that are as important as praying and asking God, um, connecting with God. It, it's such a awesome awesome opportunity that, that Jesus has given us. We have, um, he's made a way for us to approach the throne, to, to ask God and to seek his heart and to, to connect with him in such a way. Um, we, want, we, we really want to be a church that's taken advantage of that. So what you can expect from this time, I'm, I'm going to keep things as simple as I can. I want us to really take the time to pray together. So if you're watching this um, and live, uh, all that you're going to need is just some time. I'm going to, to to lead us through these prayer guides, and I'll have it up on the screen so that you guys can read along, and, and I'll give you time to pray through each one of these. There's nothing special about these prayer guides. They're, they're just... It helps us to focus our time and, and to focus our request to the Lord. So as we go through these together, um, I'm going to explain how it all works. Take the time. If, if you are watching this with your family, if you're watching this with friends, take the time to, to pray together. I'm, I'm going to give us about around two minutes for us to pray um, through each one of these requests. <clears throat> the first thing... Um, one of the resources that we have available on a, on a Sunday morning um, is the 4040 Prayer Guide. It, it's something that the North American Mission Board has, has put out. It's a really, really great prayer guide. I'm just going to read through through these, um, through how to use these. So just listen close, and uh, we'll, we'll start praying through this right now. So each one of these prayer guides... Um, each one of these 4040 prayer sheets have a certain theme to them. Um, so stay focused on the theme for each one of these prayer sessions. For many of us, it is easy to get distracted during prayer. Many other prayer needs will probably come to mind as well, and that's good. But unless God urges you to stop everything else and pray for these other concerns, consider writing them down and commit to pray for them once you've finished. Um, reading through this 4040 prayer guide. So anything that we're doing this morning, or not this morning, but tonight, we need to be uh, thinking about, as God lays something on our heart, be sure to bring a, maybe a pen and paper to write these down. Uh, every 4040 prayer guide has passages of scripture um, for us to meditate on. It really fuels our, our time and and praying with the Lord. So let the Holy Spirit speak to you through each one of these passages. Let them let the, the passages of scripture, scripture show you how they address your life, our church, our nation. Prepare your heart for intercession. Let the Holy Spirit draw into God's presence and respond to him as he speaks to you. Open your heart and your life to him before you begin your time of intercession. Enjoy the closeness of his presence and fellowship. Use the seven prayer points as, as starting points. These prayer points provide areas of concern you can focus on, but they're not comprehensive. As, as you bring these concerns before the Lord, let the Holy Spirit guide you into other related areas that need your prayer. And always consider how to personalize your prayer. Consider praying for specific family members and friends and, and for your church and for your nation. Um, for your pastor, for staff, um, for anybody by name and so on. And then, of course, we, we always want to conclude with thanksgiving. That is such an important part. God hears the request of his people and he responds. 
While he always acts according to his will, he has told us already it is his will to restore his blessing to the land of a people who meet his requirements for blessing. It is, the, it is right to thank God for hearing you and working to glorify himself through your prayers. So as we uh, go through this guide together, um, of course, those, that is kind of what to expect through this 4040 prayer guide. And there's a couple of prayer guides that uh, we've, we've, um, we'll be going through this morning. The first one is the 4040 prayer guide. Another one is some specific needs for our, our church here at Harbor. Um, the last one is for international missions overseas. So that is what to expect this, uh, tonight. Let's just get into it and um, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm just going to open us up with a quick word of prayer, and then we'll start reading through these passages of Scripture on the 4040. Father, tonight, um, Lord, we ask that you would guide our hearts, Lord, that you would speak to us in a, in a very special way, and God, that, that you would hear our hearts as well. Father, we give you so much thanks for all that you're doing in, in each and every one of our lives. God, that the little things, the big things. God, we know that you're fully in control right now and that there is nothing that is surprising you right now. And God, we just ask, we ask just like we were reading a second ago, Lord, that, that you would heal our land. Father, that you would start right here in this heart, in every heart that's gathered around um, praying right now, God, I ask, Lord, that you would begin in our hearts to work a change, to work healing in our hearts, and Lord, healing from this terrible, terrible um, disease that's just running rampant right now, Lord. We're going to give you all the thanks, and we just thank you for hearing our prayer. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the first passage of scripture is Ephesians 4, 25 through 27. Follow along as on, on the screen as we, I read this. Since you put away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down in your anger and don't give the devil an opportunity. The next passage of scripture, John 13, 34 through 35. I give you a new commandment, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you must also love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Colossians 3, 12 through 15. Therefore, God's chosen ones, holy and loved, put on heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, accepting one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also must you forgive. Above all, put on love, the perfect bond of unity, and let the peace of the Messiah to which you were also called in one body, control your hearts. Be thankful. And of course, all this goes into the theme for tonight, which is to examine our relationships. Christians must seek to restore healthy relationships. So we look at, you know, thinking back to what we just read in Ephesians, we, we don't want to lie to one another. Each one, uh, and that's talking about inside the church, we don't want to lie to one another. We want to be real and genuine with one another. Um, in John 13, Jesus himself gives us this commandment. He says, a new commandment I give to you to love one another. People will know that you are my disciples because of your love for one another. Wow. Colossians, 
it, it, in, in Colossians 3, what we just read, it talks about how since we belong to God, we are his chosen ones, that we are holy and loved by him to put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, accepting and forgiving one another and put on love because the way that we love one another is it reflects the way that we love God. So with this in mind, I want this to fuel our time in prayer. Each one of these things, being truthful and loving, be, be genuine, and keep in mind that our love for one another reflects how we love the Lord. And let the Holy Spirit work that in you. Maybe you're not loving the Lord very well right now because you, you're not forgiving one another and you're not loving one another. It starts here in the church. It starts with me and it starts with you. So the first thing is let's let's prepare our hearts um, this morning. We, we never want to rush into prayer by just thinking... Um, coming to God with request. He's not a, a vending machine. You know, we don't put in a prayer and out comes a, a blessing. It's, it's just not the way, um, the way that we go about prayer. Healthy prayer. We start, um, these are the four steps here that the 4040 is suggesting. Praise God for who he is. Confess your sinfulness and need for cleansing. Allow his spirit to draw you near. And listen as he speaks to you. So the last two suggestions are a choice. Are you going to allow the Holy Spirit that lives inside your heart if you belong to Jesus Christ to draw you near to him tonight? Are you going to listen to what he has to say to you? The first two things, let's do together. We're going to praise God for who he is. Um, one thing that's always really uh, nice is God reveals there's so many aspects to his character. Uh, choose one of those this uh, tonight and, and let's, let's thank him for that. So praise God for who he is. I'm going to give you a couple minutes. Father, I praise you that you are a God of mercy. Father, that you see the need of your people. Father, you know what each and every one of us are going through. And God, I ask tonight, Lord, that you would show mercy to us, reveal to us in, in the ways that you're working in our lives and the, the lives of our family and friends, our, our nation, God, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to show yourself as a God of mercy. God, we praise you for the great mercy that you showed to us by making a way for us to be saved by sending your son Jesus who took our sins, died on the cross, Lord, and was raised three days later. He is our hope. He's our salvation, God, and we give you every bit of the praise. Thank you for hearing our prayer this morning. The next thing I want to lead us through is a prayer for, um, for cleansing. Confess your sinfulness to him. Be specific. As we pray together, it, it is perfectly fine to get, confess our sins before our brothers and sisters. So in your home right now, wherever you're watching this, whether you're praying alone or together, 
pray together and just confess your sin to the Lord. Ask him to, to cleanse your heart. I'll give you a few minutes, a few seconds to pray. Father God, you know my heart. And you know how I've been struggling with impatience and, and anger the last few days, God. And I just ask, Lord, that you would forgive me. Forgive me for anger that leads to sin, God, for not being patient and loving my brother and my sister the best way that I can. Father, thank you for, for taking my sin and paying the price for it so long ago. Lord, I'm very, very thankful that there's nothing standing in between you and me anymore. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay. So with, with the goal in mind of examining our relationships, seeking to restore healthy relationships, the first thing to do with, with those three passages of Scripture in mind Ask God first to show you if you have any broken relationships in your life. This could be at work. This could be in your family, uh, your friends. Ask God to reveal those to you. This isn't something that we necessarily need to pray together about. Take some time to pray silently about this. Just ask God as, as you sit and wait and listen to reveal any broken relationships. I'll give you some time to do that. Father, tonight we ask you, Lord, to reveal any broken relationships that is in my life. God, as, as we listen and we wait, God, as those people come to mind, God, we just want to thank you for hearing our prayer. I'm going to thank you for bringing those people to mind. The next thing is to ask God to help you know if you have contributed to broken relationships. So when, when those do come to mind, ask God to, to help you know what, what you've done, what, what part you've played, how you've contributed to those broken relationships. Let's pray. Father, help us to know if there was anything, any way that we've contributed to these broken relationships. As we listen, God, we just want you to speak to our hearts right now. The next thing that we're going to ask the Lord to do is to help us to determine all that we can do, all that I can do to mend my relationship, my broken relationships, all that you can do to mend your broken relationships. I want to point our, our attention back to this passage, passage of Scripture in Colossians. It says, 
holy and, and beloved, put on holy, uh, put on heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are some of the things that, that God works in us to be able to, to change our hearts and, and to help mend those. I don't know very many humble people that are truly humble in their hearts when they've wronged somebody. That is a, it doesn't make a big impact on the other person that they've wronged. So as we ask the Lord to, to lead us this morning, to help us determine what we need to do in our, in our power to help mend these relationships, that's being responsible to them to do the right thing that God is leading us towards. We can't, we can't ever control their response, but we can control what we need to be doing in, their, in, in the right thing in the Lord's eyes. So let's pray together. Father, we ask this morning, Lord, that you would lead us right now, help us to, uh, to determine exactly what you want each one of us to do to mend these broken relationships, God. If that is just asking you to work compassion in our hearts, that we would have a love for the people that wronged us, or or maybe that we have wronged God, to show them kindness, God, that you would humble our hearts, Lord, that it wouldn't be about us anymore. Father, whether it's we need to speak in, with gentleness, and we need to act in gentleness, or... Lord, that you would work patience in our hearts for people that just tend to get on our nerves or vice versa. God, whatever you want us to do, God, make us a people that are willing to do it. God, as we just listen for your leading, God, we just ask you to speak and, and to guide us into these things. Take some time to listen. Next thing that we're going to be praying for is we are asking God to do something that we have no, absolutely no power over. And that's how people respond. So as, as God has led you to know how you should respond, whether it's in humility, patience, kindness, however that love looks like specifically to your situation, when it comes to this relationship, we need to know that there are things we have no control over. And that's how people respond. So let's ask God to work in this relationship. So, Father, right now we ask, Lord, that you would change a heart in this person that I've wronged, in this broken relationship, God. That you would help those that I have hurt to forgive me. Father, we know that, that you have, that you can, you can work a change in anybody. And God, I just ask, Lord, that with this person that I have in my mind. Lord, I ask that you would place forgiveness in their heart. As we pray, mention that person specifically by name. And then as we pray, it's always important to remember that we need 
to believe that God is going to work. These aren't empty phrases that we're heaping up at the ceiling. We, we believe that God is going to work in this. We believe that God is hearing our, our prayer right now, that we, he's hearing our voice, and we need to be real with him. If we're asking him to do these things, let's be a people that believe that he's going to do them. The next thing I want to lead us to is to ask God uh, to restore your fellowship with them. It's one thing for somebody to forgive. Um, it's another thing to restore fellowship. So if this is somebody inside the church, outside the church, um, ask God right now just to work a big change that, that God would bring your relationship back together, that it would be healthy. Not just that it would be mended, but it would be healthy. So <clears throat> let's go to God right now. Remember, at, mention them specifically by name. And I'm just going to give you some time to pray through this. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would restore this, this fellowship specifically between me and this other person. The next thing that we're going to pray through as far as asking God to heal broken relationships is we need courage to seek to restore this relationship. Part of this is on us. Part of this is the Lord's responsibility. So as far as our part is concerned, let's ask God right now to give us courage. God, we ask that you would give us courage to seek to restore fellowship. Lord, that we would not just settle uh, for a mended relationship, but Lord, we want to do our part to restore fellowship. So God, give us courage, put courage in our heart, Lord, that we would take initiative, that we would go the extra mile to show somebody that we, we truly love them, that we truly have forgiven them in our heart, Lord, that there's no animosity, no ill will, Lord, but we would truly love them the way that you have loved us, an unconditional, unrelenting love. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer. The last thing we want to ask for is for God to help us to be a peacemaker. This is something only he can work in our hearts. And, and we need to ask him for it. God is the one that changes hearts and our own is included. We have very, very little control in our lives when we see the big picture. So let's ask the Lord, who is the greatest peacemaker of them all, to work a change in us. Let's pray together. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would work peace in my heart, Lord, that when, when tough times rise up and, and there is conflict and it's, it's going to happen, God, that I would always seek for peace, that I would always desire to, to love my brother and my sister above myself, Lord, that you really would clothe us in 
humility, gentleness, kindness, patience, all these things, God. Lord, that our lives as a whole would be so full of love for people. Lord, that even when we fight for truth and we fight for justice and we fight for the things that are are important to your heart, God, that we would still do it in a loving way. That whenever possible, God, you would make me a peacemaker. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayer tonight. We thank you and we trust you, Lord, that you're at work to accomplish your will. God, we we give you all the praise for bringing us alongside something that is so important to you that we forgive one another, that we love one another, that we would have fellowship with one another so that, Lord, that you could make us an effective people, that you could make us an effective church that is pursuing your purposes, that are pursuing the things that are important to you. God, that we wouldn't just be another Christian sitting on another pew, but, Father, that we would truly be a people that have love for one another, that are serving alongside, that are suffering next to one another, that are celebrating next to one another, Lord, that we would have your heart in mind and that we would busy our hands and busy our mouths and busy our lives with accomplishing your will here on earth, your will in our lives and important so importantly lord your will and our relationships so god we surrender our relationships to you do whatever you want to in our relationships do whatever you want to in my life lord we give you every bit of our lives and we surrender these to you god thank you for hearing our prayer this morning you are god to be glorified above all in jesus name we pray amen The next thing I want to lead us through is specifically things that are going on in the life of our church. These these prayer guides are available um, in the ministry center. They're on the stage a lot of times. Uh, We... There's nothing really special about these prayers. It just helps to guide our time. So we're just going to go through these one by one. I'll give you a a short time to pray through these. And of course, they'll be on the screen just like in the last prayer guide. I hope that you're just really seeking the Lord tonight with me. Where this prayer guide is pointed is to the service tomorrow. And the service is going to look a little bit different than it ever has before. Um, it's going to be really tough. We got we got to remember it's going to be tough uh, for a lot of people to gather as a family on a Sunday morning to sing, it, to to pray together, to hear the word together, to discuss it together. It's going to look different. Not that it's a very exciting time, and the fact that we're in new territory. But we need to just plead with God and and ask God to work powerfully on our church that we would still be a people that are effectively coming together to worship, to, to hear God's word, to respond to God's word, even though it's a different environment. So tonight, would you pray for me? Pray for for Brett, pray for for Sean, pray for all of our pastors. Pray for each and every person that comes to mind in all these different circumstances that we're going to be in tomorrow morning. So as we pray through each one of these, I want to just remind us that that our, our goal is to see the Lord glorified. That's what tomorrow morning's about. So let's, uh, let's begin by praying for the first thing on the list. 
Ask God to make us into a praying people that depend on him for everything. The heart behind this prayer is that there's only so much that we can accomplish apart from the Lord, and it's not very much. We want to be a people that rely on him so heavily for every little thing, for the big things, for the little things. So take some time to pray through this. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to make us into a people that are all about prayer, that lean so heavily on you, Lord, that even in the little things, the big things, God, that you are at work and we're asking you to do things in our lives. Make us into a praying people. Make us into a church that prays. Father, I know that you desire your house to be a house of prayer. So Lord, please work that in our church. The next two things on this prayer list uh, we've already prayed for in the last prayer guide. Um, And that's giving praise to God for a specific aspect of his character. That is asking God to um, forgive you for any sin that's in your life. We're asking, we're repenting of any sin in our life. So we've done those things. Typically, we would pray through these again on a Sunday morning. Uh, But just for the sake of time, let's go to to number four on the, the list. It says, pray that our church would worship the Lord together in this unusual way tomorrow morning. So let's pray together. Father, as each person, as each family gathers together around uh, Northeast Oklahoma, God, on the internet, on Facebook Live, and and we are worshiping together at 11 o'clock, God, I ask, Lord, that you would help each person, even though we're so far apart from one another in our houses, Lord, that you would still help us to feel connected to one another, that we would still encourage one another, God, that we would still all be singing the name of Jesus in each home, God. Such an exciting opportunity, God. We just ask that each person would engage you in the same way or in a greater way than they engage on Sunday morning when we gather together at a building. Father, only you can do this. God, we ask that you would speak through your word tomorrow morning. We ask, Lord, that you would work powerfully to speak to our hearts and to guide us to a response, Lord, that we would Be a people that are faithful to hear, to understand, and to respond. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayer. The next thing I want us to to pray for, ask God to grow each person spiritually. And again, this is something only he can do. Let's pray. God, we ask, Lord, that you would grow each person spiritually tomorrow. 
Lord, that your word would find a place in their heart. Lord, that they would not harden their heart, that they would not stuff up their ears, but they would hear, they would understand. And God, that you would grow us in godliness from the way that people engage you tomorrow morning. Father, we don't want anyone to waste their time tomorrow morning by turning on a Facebook Live video and watching it with the same amount of concern as they do a movie or a YouTube video. God, I pray that when we all gather together over Facebook Live tomorrow, Lord, that you would work in such a powerful way, Lord, that there would be no other explanation but your hand at work. And we just ask you to do something that only you can do, God, and that you and only you would get the glory for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Next, I want us to ask God to convict those that are lost of their sin and that he would save them, lead them to repent. So let's pray for that right now. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would work powerfully in the lives of those that don't have a relationship with you. Lord, that they would hear your voice. And Father, that they would see their need. They would see the sin in their own life. Lord, they would see the need for a Savior. And Father, that they would surrender their life to you. For the first time, God, I ask, Lord, that many tomorrow would hear their Savior for the first time and that they would surrender their whole life to you. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer. The next thing is a prayer that has so much to do with what we're the series that we're going through in Psalms 23. Last week we learned, you know, that the Lord is my shepherd. Tomorrow morning we'll be hearing teaching on the second part of that and the that verse in verse 1 I shall not want. This next prayer is it's tailored to us. In light of that, and this is what it says, ask God to shepherd us as we submit to his will. So would you pray that with me right now? Father, we thank you that you are a good shepherd. We thank you that you know exactly what we need and, and where we need to be led. So God, I ask, Lord, that we would be good sheep, that we would be submissive, that we would be willing to follow that we would be a people that trust you, that you know exactly what we need. Tomorrow morning, God, I ask, Lord, that you would just lead us into goodness. God, because you know exactly not only what we need, but the best things for us. You are the good shepherd, Father. And we thank you. 
that you sent your son Jesus to lead us. We give you all the praise, Lord. It's in his name we pray, amen. The next thing is, is real weighty. Um, we want God to grow us in love and in unity. So that, that begins with me and you. But we're also, it, it's a loaded prayer because we're asking God to work in the lives of our church that they would have a love for us and that they would seek unity as well. It has so much to do with what we just prayed about in the 4040 prayer guide, that we would be peacemakers. So would you pray that with me this morning? Not this morning, but tonight. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would grow our people in love and in unity. Lord, that we would seek to love people in the very best way that we can. God, work in my heart to fill it with love, to put a desire for unity there. And we ask, Lord, that you would do that in the, the hearts of all those. God, in our church, outside our church, but especially those inside God, that there would be such a love for one another and such a, a unity in what we're doing, Lord. A unity in the way that we, we serve one another, in the way we love one another, in the way we worship you, in the way that we respond to you, God. The desire to see you glorified. The desire to see new people come to Christ in our communities. Father, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. The next thing we're going to be praying through is ask God to grow our church, to grow ourselves, our brothers, our sisters in humility and holiness. This is a really, really tough prayer because it's all about coming to the end of ourselves. It's about choosing, really making that choice in ourselves to not have our own way, to not make it all about us. We pray, um, we pray for our church in this because God can use us in a mighty way when we're all full of humility and our lives are reflecting Christ and holiness. So let's pray. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would work powerfully in us. Lord, that you would make us a humble people, that you would make us holy. Father, that you would help us to, to truly love one another by not having our own way, but putting the needs of others above the needs of ourselves. Father, we know that you promised to exalt the humble. God, and we just ask, Lord, that you would make us a people that have hearts of humility, ready to serve, ready to love, ready to truly worship you, Lord. I ask, Lord, that you would break our pride. And Father, we pray, Lord, that our lives would begin to look more like Jesus. 
starting with me, God. Help my life to look more like the life of your son, Jesus. Work his character in me. God, I'm reminded of John the Baptist when he said, he must increase and I must decrease. God, that's what we're praying this tonight. God, I just ask, Lord, that you would you would work that in my heart. And we're going to give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. The next thing is, is huge. Um, pray that God would grow a love of his word in our hearts. That we would be a people that truly love his word. That we would search the scriptures, that we would find his promises to us, that we would find direction. Let's pray. God, help us to be a people that love your word, that truly treasure what you have to say. God, that that not just a people that learn more, but Lord, that hear and understand and obey. God, we, we don't want to be a people that are just merely learning to know things. But God, help us to be a people that are doers of the word and not just hearers only. God, help us to, to open up our lives to, in submission to you and to everything that you've said in the Bible. Lord, we love you. Thank you for hearing our prayer. The next thing is to ask God to make us bold in sharing the gospel. And I know, um, as well as you do, we're not brushing shoulders with a lot of people right now. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. But it's it's looking a little bit different than the way that it has in the past. So I really believe we're going to have to be more intentional um, in ways, in creative ways to share the gospel. But you know what? God can do this. God can do this through me. He can do this through you. Let's ask God to make us bold and sharing the gospel. Let's ask him. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would make us a bold people in sharing the gospel, Lord, that when we have an opportunity, Lord, that we would just jump on it. God, we ask that you would open up many doors to myself, to my brothers, my sisters, God, that we would be looking for opportunities to share the gospel. When you open up a door, God, make us a people that are ready to move. Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you for the, the power of, of the gospel, Lord, that there is there is power just in these words, Lord, that Jesus has died for our sin and that he was risen. He is risen, Lord. God, I pray that we would take this message of hope to, to the people around us, God, Make us a bold people, bold in, in finding new ways, bold in, in passion, bold in creativity, God. Make us a bold people that are willing to step out. And we're going to give you all the praise for everything you do. The next thing I, we need to be praying for is to ask God to raise up more faithful men and women to serve in our ministries. 
we have so many serving in our church and it's awesome. But right now, it, it looks a little bit different. It does. But this is something we always need to be praying for. One, one of the things that our church is very passionate about is having every believer serving one another. Every believer using their gifts, their abilities, using their hands to serve one another. That is what the church looked like in Acts, and that's what we desire here at Harbor. And just because some of the ministries look a little bit different right now when we're not able to meet together doesn't mean we shouldn't be praying for more people to, to want in on serving, for more people to experience the blessing that God gives through serving one another and the love that you feel through that and the love that God feels when he sees his children serving one another. So this is really important. Let's, let's pray about this. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would, you would work something in our hearts, God, that in, in the way that we are serving, God, that you would make us even more faithful. And God, I ask, Lord, that you would stir up hearts of those who are not serving, Lord, that you would, you would stir them to faithful service. God, we, we desire to be a church that, that loves one another in the way that we serve. We desire to be a church, Lord, just like the Acts Church. People were drawn to, to Jesus by the love that they saw inside the church. And we want to be that church, God. We want to be a church that represents you well. So God, please, please add more to our number of those who are serving. God, please, for those who are serving, give us a deeper, a deeper understanding of what our service is actually doing. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord, that you've designed your church this way. And we just ask you to build it. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. The next thing is to pray for our small groups, that God would grow our small groups. And there's so many ways our small groups can grow both in number, of course, and in spiritually. We want our small group time to be worthwhile. We want God to use that in us. But also, we have so many out in our communities right now that are in desperate need of a small group. Some, the, some are inside the church and some aren't. And we got to be on the lookout for people to invite to small group. So if you, would, if you would just pray with me tonight that God would grow our small groups, let's do that. Father, I ask, Lord, that you would grow our small groups, that you would help us to, to keep moving forward in our relationship with you. Lord, that you would grow our love for one another. You would grow our unity, God. You would grow our, our desire for godliness, God. Lord, I ask, Lord, that you would add many to our small groups. Lord, that new small groups would start up. I just ask, Lord, that you would just do such a mighty work in, in our community right now. Lord, we're in desperate need of fellowship. We're in desperate need of community, especially in the situation we're in, God. I pray, Lord, that you would work powerfully to show people their need for community. And Lord, I ask that you would lead them to join a small group. God, 
grow our small groups spiritually, grow our small groups in number. We, we're we going to give you all the praise for that. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The next thing I want us to pray for is our Harbor U classes. Um, this is something we're still offering in person um, for the time being. So um, I want to say that tomorrow is Connections 3. I could be wrong. I'm losing track of the days too. <laughs> I'm a human person too. Um, but tomorrow we will be having a, a class up here at, at the ministry center where I'm at right now. Um, we, we really want to see people grow and, and, and how to connect with the Lord to how to serve. Um, tomorrow is all about finding out our, our, if it is connections three, it's finding our, our shape, our gifts, our abilities, how we are made to serve. So we want people to be discovering that service is important and knowing where your strength and service is, is very important. So let's just, just join me in praying, um, for Harbor U right now. God, I ask, Lord, that you would grow us in godliness through our Harbor U classes. God, that every everything that we do would be worthwhile, that it would be building up the body of Christ. God, that we would be an effective people, that we would be holy, Lord, that we would be pursuing you. Lord, that's what Harbor University is all about. God, it, it's about getting plugged in. It's about knowing you better. It's about serving others better. God, we just want to be a church that is is moving forward. And God, we ask that you would use Harbor University in a powerful way. God, that you would lay it on people's hearts, Lord, to, to go through connections one through four. God, and, and to put those, everything they learn to work, God. I know that you can use it in a powerful way. And Lord, we just desire that you would use every Harbor University class, even the electives as well, God, to just build up our church. That's what it's all about, Lord. And, and Lord, we just ask that you would make it effective, God, that you would work in people's hearts and your, in people's lives through it. And we're going to give you all the praise for that. The next thing I want to lead us through is asking God to, to change our hearts to lead us to a next step. We want to be a people that are moving forward. We want to be a people that don't get comfortable and complacent. We we want to really be pursuing Christ. And that that's every one of us. That's every person that calls Harbor Church home. That's every person that steps through the doors. We want to see people take the next step toward him. And only God decides that next step. He lays it on people's hearts. But we want to be um, always pointing to that. Um, as a church, we want to be, because I, I don't want to be plateauing. I don't want to be complacent. I want to be following him passionately. And we need to desire that for our brothers and sisters as well. Let's, let's pray and just ask God to lead us, to lead me, to lead you, to lead our brothers and sisters to a next step when we encounter him. Let's pray.
God, we, we ask tonight, Lord, that you would lead our people to even individually take a next step toward you. Father, that we, we wouldn't be a people that are just sitting back in God and, and not involved and not, not pursuing you and not desiring you, God. I, we, we don't want people to be, to be missing out on what you have for them. God, I don't want to miss out what you have for me, on, on what you have for me. So God, right now, we just ask, Lord, that you would lay a next step on people's hearts. Tomorrow morning, God, when we gather around your word, Lord, and you are speaking to hearts, and, and, and Holy Spirit, you are just working so powerfully in us. God, I ask, Lord, that you would guide us to whatever that next step is. God, if it's joining the church, if it's giving our life, Surrendering our life to Jesus. If it's joining a ministry, if it's joining a small group, God, whatever that whatever it may be, if it if it's just to confess sin and repent, or if it's to pray, whatever the next step is, God, work it in us. We don't want to be a people that are hard hearted. We don't want to be a people that are, are not listening to your voice and not seeking you, God. I know. I know that we don't always seek you, but Lord, you're always seeking us. And God, we just ask right now, Lord, that you would work powerfully, powerfully to lead us on. We're going to give you all the praise for everything that you do. The next thing I want us to pray for is uh, what I was talking about a little bit just a second ago, that God would awaken the stagnant, the disobedient the comfortable within our church. We don't want anybody to miss out. And we, we, we want everybody to be experiencing the blessing that comes from a right relationship with the Lord, uh, being involved in loving our brothers and sisters in ministry. There's so many ways, but whether we get complacent, which, which happens, or, or somebody is being disobedient and living in sin, or if they're just stagnant. And, and we need to love them enough to be praying for them through that. When, when I go through those, those periods in my life, I, I want people to be loving me enough to be praying for me. So would you do that tonight? Would you pray for, for our brothers and sisters in the church that have become stagnant, disobedient, comfortable. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are a God that cares for us and pursues us even when we're not pursuing you. And Lord, we know your great patience with us. We know your great love for us. We can only begin to understand it, God. But Father, right now, we just want to lift up our brothers and sisters. God, even if we are going through that, God, we want to just ask, Lord, that you would awaken us. But we want to pray for our brothers and sisters as well, Lord, that you would speak tenderly to them. You would speak to their heart, that you would wake them up and snap them awake, God, that they would know how much you love them how patient you're being with them. Lord, restore to them the joy of your salvation that you've given them. And Lord, we ask 
Lord, that we, that we would win a brother or a sister back to you. We ask you to work in their hearts right now. There's so many names that we, we don't even know who to pray for. But you know, you know every heart. You know every thing going on with us. And God, we just ask that you would work in a powerful way to reignite a passion in them. To set purpose back in their eyes, God. To strengthen their hands, their feet. God, we love you and we thank you for that you are the God that changes hearts and leads hearts. And we're going to give you all the praise for that. Right now, uh, I want us to pray for Harbor Coffee and Ulaga. I just, it's a really great ministry, a really great outreach to our community. And God can use it in a powerful way. So let's pray for every person that goes through those doors. Every person in the community that may never step into a church. We want to see people have a place to gather together. We want new relationships to be grown in that place with, with our community. Um, as we serve the community, let's just pray that people would be one to Christ. It's all about His glory. So let's pray. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would use Harbor Coffee in a powerful way, Lord, that many would gather there, um, even in this time of uncertainty, God, that many would come to know you through that ministry. Lord, we thank you for all that you're doing through it, and Lord, we'll continue just to be faithful, God, to pray for this ministry, and Lord, just thank you for everything that you've you've worked through it and that you're going to do. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We have two more things to pray for. This is the the next thing. Ask, ask God to use you this week to further the spread of the gospel. How can he use you? How can he use you? Can he use you in your home? Can he use you over social media, text messaging, with your friends, your family, your coworkers. I, I don't know. I don't know what your situation looks like. But ask God to use you in a powerful way for the spread of the gospel. That could be sharing the gospel. That could be living your life in such a way that people stop and ask, why are you living this way so that you can share the gospel with them? Our lives, our words, God can use so many different things. And there's so many different ways that I don't even know to, to, to name. So would you pray that with me tonight? Let's pray. Father, we ask you that this week, this this coming up week, God, that you would use us, use me to further the spread of the gospel. 
in everything that we do, God. I, I ask, Lord, that in this time of uncertainty, Lord, that you would make us beacons of hope. Lord, we have the message of hope. And God, I ask, Lord, that you would put on our minds ways for us to further the spread of the gospel. We know that you you work to make us bold, but God, there's also a part that we have to do. God, we have to be obedient to go out and to spread the gospel, to share it. So Father, lead us to do that. We ask we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The last thing I want us to pray for is, if you're watching this video, if you've watched it all the way through, I'm telling you, you are, you are a solution to this. The last thing has been on here since we've been doing these prayer guides, and it's just asking God to build up this prayer ministry. My heart is just so heavy with, with the need to... to See it, see our church be a church that prays. And I'm telling you guys, I'm telling everybody, if we can only do so much, if God's hand is not in on on everything that we do, it doesn't it doesn't succeed. Everything could be led perfectly. Every person could be serving in a ministry, but it doesn't mean that it accomplishes anything without God's hand in it. So we need to be a people that are begging and pleading for God to empower our church, to empower every service, every sacrifice for his glory. When we become a church that prays, we're going to be a church that meets these God-sized goals. I, I promise you, it'll be 20 campuses instead of 10 because we are being a church that is faithful to pray. I don't want to sit here and preach to you guys. That's not what this time is about. But as, as we've prayed together tonight, you're starting to see how powerfully God can use prayer. He is a God that hears our voice. He is a God that, that wants to act. But we need to be a church that's faithful to ask him. So would you join me? Ask God to build up our prayer ministry. Let's pray. Father, we ask, Lord, that you would use, um, use us in a powerful way, God. Put on our hearts, on the heart of our church, both campuses, God, that we need to pray. And God, I know that all prayer needs to be, it needs to be began in secret. It needs to be began in private. Coming together to pray is such a wonderful thing. But Lord, we need to have prayer lives behind closed doors. We need to be asking you for things. Not just corporate, but also in private, God. But we ask, Lord, that you would be working in people's hearts. That they would see a need for corporate prayer worship, God. And that we would be seeking you together. We would be asking you for things. Lord, we'd be confessing sin Lord, that we would be lifting up your name and, and praising your name, God, in prayer. God, that, that we would be standing in the gap the way that Moses did, that we'd be praying for our brothers and sisters going through a tough time. Lord, that we'd be asking for you to provide for them, to forgive them, God, to 
all the different things that we can pray for, Lord, we just ask that you would make us a church that is passionate about prayer. Lord, tomorrow morning when we have service in, in a new way, everybody meeting, meeting online, God, and worshiping in their homes, Lord, that, that we ask that you would work powerfully through that. Despite that, God, work powerfully. Lord, and we're going to give you all the praise. We want to be a church that is passionate about your purposes, about your name, and that is bringing the, the small things and the big things directly to you together as a church family. Father, we thank you for hearing our prayers this uh, tonight. God, we just ask that you would work powerfully in our church. You're such a good God. And we're going to give you all the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The last thing that I want to take us through very quickly is every every Sunday I've been getting getting on the IMB website. You can we have access to this on our resources on our on our website. But it's the IMB prayer page and, and we're praying for international missions, real needs that are happening day to day. These get posted online every day. So these are just the, the top three on, on the top of the page. I, I print them off every Sunday. We're going to pray through these together. South Asian unengaged peoples. The Kashmiri speaking Gujar following Islam a monotheistic religion built around the teachings of the Quran and the Prophet Muhammad. They are a nomadic community of water buffalo herders who annually migrate from the mountains of Kashmir to the plains. The migratory patterns of this community have contributed to a low education level and to the Gujar being classified, classified as a backward caste set status. There are a handful of known believers among the Gujar. However, the group, with its large large population of 1,175,000 eternal souls, remains unreached. Pray that the Kashmiri Gujar of India will read the New Testament and consider the claims of Jesus. Pray for the local believers to boldly proclaim the gospel message. And ask the churches, ask that churches will emerge in each of their villages. Pray that the Lord of the harvest will raise up and send out many labors into the area of the Kashmiri speaking Gajar of India where they where they reside. Pray that God would open Gajar hearts to believe that Jesus offered a perfect and final sacrifice for sinners on the cross. Let's pray for them together. God, we pray for the the Gujari, uh, the Gujar people of India. Lord, we ask, Lord, that they would read the New Testament and consider Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would work powerfully in their hearts, Lord, as as your word is read. And Lord, that you would convict of sin. Lord, that you would lead them to repent and follow Jesus and surrender their whole life, God. God, I pray for these local believers that are in the Gujar people, that they would be bold in the way that they proclaim the gospel. And God, I ask that you would plant churches in each one of their, their villages, God, and that the churches would flourish. God, we ask that you would send many more laborers into the area of the Gujar of India. And God, that, that you would just lay on their hearts to go and that you would equip them in every way to build up your church. And God, we ask that you would open their hearts, Lord, that they would believe that Jesus is the perfect and final sacrifice for sin. We ask all this in Jesus' name. All right, the next one is the, the people of the upper plains of Karnataka, India. 
On March 25th, the Hindus of Karnataka will observe Ugadi, which celebrates the arrival of the spring season. Although the spring season is more uh, comparable to summer in the United States, it says, about a week before Ugadi, people will clean their houses thoroughly and buy new clothes for everyone in their family. In addition, the women will adorn the area in front of their door with beautiful ringoli, an ornate design made of colored rice, flower petals, sand, and flower. Pray that as people worship Lord Brahma, believing that the world was created on that day, they will hear about the true creator, and not only how he created the world, but how he desires to have a relationship with each and every one of them. Also intercede for new believers who have come to faith since the previous year, asking that they will use, use, use this time to purge their house of idols that they may be, have been holding on to or afraid to relinquish. Ask God to give them boldness to explain to their neighbors why they are doing this. So let's pray for the Hindus of, of Karnataka in India. Father, we ask, Lord, that as this uh, pagan celebrations is coming out, and God, that they would see you, the only one and true creator. Lord, we know that Lord Brahma does not exist. He's no Lord God. He's just merely an idol. He's a, he's a dead God, little g. And Lord, we give you all the praise. You are the one true creator that designed us, that knit us in our mother's womb, God. And you've done so much for the Karnataka, God, the, the Hindus of Karnataka, Lord. And you love them so dearly, God. We ask, Lord, that they would know you. God, I pray for these new believers, God, that have, have come to faith in Karnataka, God, that they would throw away their idols, God. Lord, that, that you would give them courage, God, to, to relinquish them. I pray that those will go in the garbage, Lord. God, I ask, Lord, that you would give these believers boldness to explain to their neighbors why they're doing this. God, whatever the cost, we want to see you glorified. God, strengthen believers when many people to Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen. The last thing we're praying for tonight is, I know I'm going to say these names wrong. These names are really tough to pronounce. The Ta Tajiks of Afghanistan. And this, this name has been changed just to, uh, for the safety of the person. But Sonny works as a manager from early in the morning until late at night. He is married, has several children, and is well-respected in his community. Pray that he will value God's opinion over man's. Pray that despite his heavy work schedule, he, would have, he will obtain access to the gospel. May he and his entire household come to know the truth of the gospel and follow Christ. Pray for his salvation and ask that all of his hard work will be for the kingdom. So this is a real need. All these have been real needs from missionaries that are on the ground overseas. Let's pray for Sonny. God, we ask, Lord, that you would be with Sonny and his family, God, as, as he works from early in the morning till late at night, God, that you would bless his, his hands, God, and, and give him blessing. And God, may he knows that that comes from you. God, I thank you, Lord, for that he's well-respected in the community, that he is hardworking, that he's, we pray for his marriage right now, Lord, and his relationship with his kids. But God, I also ask the most important thing, Lord, that you would win his heart, Lord, that it would be completely surrendered over to you. We pray right now together that Father, that he would value what you have to say over what men have to say. That he wouldn't look to the praise of men. That he would only look to you. The one true God, not Allah, but you, Father God. 
God, we ask, Lord, that he would have access to the gospel. And we ask, Lord, that his, him and his entire household, his wife, his kids, they would come to surrender their lives to Jesus. And that they would follow him. And God, we ask all this in his name. Amen. I appreciate you joining me tonight. I know it's been a a long, long couple of hours. But man, God is good. And I want to encourage you to continue to pray in faith. Pray that God is going to do something. Believe that he will when you ask him to. Because James tells us that if, if we ask him and, and don't expect him to do anything, we'll receive nothing. So let's be a church that continue to move forward and and praying in private and praying together. I love you guys, and we'll see you real soon.